everybody, I'm Josh. And I'm Rachel. And we found an article on Eater Dallas that is kind of going to guide our trip here. It shows 11 iconic dishes that you need to try whether you're a tourist or a local. Some of them are going to need a ride share or taxi to get there, and some of them we can get there by foot. And I almost forgot, we're going to do this all in 48 hours or less. Let's go. Eleven <laughs> restaurants. You got to start right after the airport. You can see our luggage is right there. Great. Right. Twenty-four hours a day. <laughs> yes, Sunny Brian's Smokehouse. Yes. I'm gonna start with the pork rib here. Whoa, it's those! Just like that is falling right, right off. off. The bone. Mm. No extra sauce needed. I don't think so. So the sauce comes in this silly. Not silly. <laughs> this nice little Corona Redep bottle. Yeah. Heated up over there. I don't think you need extra sauce on that. That thing's so tender and good. It's It's got a nice smoky flavor on it and you can taste the little bit of char on this side of it. Really stands out. I don't notice an overwhelming uh, barbecue taste or anything weird, like barbecue sauce taste, but what stands out is how tender that meat is. Okay. And you can just see it fall right off the bone. <laughs> that bone is clean. And we did a large combo plate or a large barbecue plate. This comes with, uh, I believe it was three meats. Yeah, three quarters of a pound. Three quarters of a pound. Three meats. Two sides. Yeah. So we did the brisket, which you can do slice or chop. We did sliced. It doesn't look like I, we, we got the fatty brisket, but we got the sliced brisket. You can see that char and that smoke ring on that. Look at that thing. Again, super tender, super smoky flavor. Mm. <laughs> nice. I was hoping that this is what Texas barbecue was going to taste like and it so far hits the spot. I would add extra sauce on the brisket though. Yeah, we definitely, and I'm thinking we'll probably add some sauce to that pulled pork too. I agree. Yeah. And then for our sides, we went with coleslaw, potato salad, you can also get baked beans and french fries. And then the other thing that Eater talks about is the peach cobbler, so we're going to have that as well. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and try this pulled pork. You can see it's nice and shredded. Um, added some sauce to it though. Not as peppery as I was kind of expecting for a Texas barbecue. That's um, what I was that's expecting. Maybe more in the beef yeah. that you I got. I didn't notice it there either, so yeah. Um, it's good, tender, moist. Um, I do like the sauce. It's kind of vinegary actually. Is it? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, Josh got the angle, but you can totally see that smoke ring on that brisket. Yeah, you should you try a bite see. of that too with that sauce on it and see what you think. All right. I know his favorite's gonna be the pork rib, so that's really? not a surprise. Yeah, I mean we love pork ribs anyhow, so that is good. And you can you can just see like it just tears apart. It's literally <laughs> falling apart. So peach cobbler is what they mention. So we got to do it. It's still steaming. It looks like. Yes, they said that this just came right out of the oven. So let's give it a try. It's not overly sweet. Um, I really like the topping, actually. I don't. Really? Okay. It's a hard one to describe. It doesn't but you look can like see there's, there's any sugar or anything on it. No, no, it's not. It's not super sweet. There is a bit of a. It's like a hot jelly almost. Oh, okay. It. That's kind of a weird description, but it is what it is. Um, and by the way, one of the reasons why I think this makes the list: the Bryan family has been um, smoking meats in this area since like 1910. And they've been at this location since 1958. So it's an institution in this area. And so far it's a pretty good start. That's right. I will say as Josh is working on that, we were not fans of the potato salad and the coleslaw was just kind of plain, but the potato salad had a real mustardy vinegary flavor that we just didn't find good, but and the winner. The ribs. <laughs> the ribs winner, were the winner is the winner. Definitely would go that route. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's finish up and dig into that peach cobbler. morning and officially we are starting this right. um actually we started it last night you already saw that but we are going to try to go to 11 restaurants 
and try 11 iconic dishes here in Dallas in 48 hours. <laughs> yeah, our Uber driver last night is like, that's pretty good accomplishment if you can get it done. Yeah, we read off the places that were listed by Eater Dallas. And for the most part, all of them he agreed on. There's like one spot that he wasn't sure, but you'll have to stick around to see which one that is. That's right. Um, last night we did start at Sunny Brian's Smokehouse. Um, and we are going to give some star rating as far as the food and the overall experience. Yeah. So for food? For food, I would give it a three. I thought it was really good. The meat was really tender. It had a great smoke flavor, like smokehouse mm -hmm. flavor. I thought it was really good. So I would give it three. And we're doing out of five stars. Yes. And overall experience, we're giving it about two and a half. So when we got there, um, there wasn't really a lot of people around. The staff had to like come in from the back room. Um, there was, yeah, there, there was not a lot of assistance from and, staff there. Yeah, and then we, it was about 10 minutes before midnight. So granted that's piece two. And then she's like, I can't take your order until 1201. So she, okay, so she just left walked us. around the kitchen. We stood there by ourselves for about 10 Three to 15 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Um, but so that kind of took it off a little bit. We did like the venue. Yeah, um, it was really I thought that the cool. school desks were really cool. Mm -hmm. um, but no, one place is done. It was good, but I bet we can do better. I bet we can. All right, so one of the difficulties you're gonna have if you wanna do something like this is you gotta figure out what places are open. Yeah. Um, so there's only one place that's 24 seven, one place that opens at nine, one that opens at 10. Everything else opens at the same time at 11 and they're not all closed. Yeah. Now, we came down to our third stop. No. Second. We came down to our second stop and it was supposed to open at nine. Online it says it and on the door it says it. But then there's another sign that says it opens at 10. So and we're going to. So and the door is locked. And the door is locked. So we're going to do a little sightseeing. We're actually in the downtown area. This is going to be the only downtown stop today. Yes. And then we're going to do all the outlying areas. You, but, will, you will need either uh, your own car, which parking can be difficult, or Uber, Lyft, rideshare, something of that sort. Right. But we're going to go ahead and check out a couple things that are only a few blocks away from this stop. And then we'll head back for uh, eatery number two. All right. So if you remember one major historical thing that happened in Dallas, it happened right here. X marks the spot. This is where John F. Kennedy was assassinated and the building that they say Lee Harvey Oswald shot him from was up there. So there's some trees in the way now. I'm not sure if they were there at the same time, but we're going to go. There's a little memorial, it looks like, over here. Um, and we're right about six to seven blocks away from our uh, breakfast spot. Um, but you can get to it pretty easily. Alright, so here's a slightly different view. We're a little bit up, um, not far though. But you can see the X right there. And the grassy knoll is apparently just on the other side over here. So that's where they believe that there was a second shooter, or the conspiracy theorists think that yeah. there is. What do you think? Two shooters, one shooter? Alright, we are back at our second restaurant. Opened back in 1987, Williams Fried Chicken has over 40 locations here in Dallas area now. And who doesn't want fried chicken for breakfast? So yeah. let's go. All right, for 1236, we each got a two piece a dark, a roll, and a drink. It's a pretty good price right there. Yeah, fancy ketchup. <laughs> All right, we just got done eating some chicken over at Williams Fried Chicken. Uh, the chicken was really good. Yeah, I would give it a four or five stars. It was yes. really crispy, uh, moist inside. It was delicious. Yes, very good. Um, as far as an experience, it's a fast food joint in the inner city. It's <laughs> not, it's not going to get high star rating. Overall, the venue is very basic. Um, last night's was pretty basic. This was as bare bones as it gets. No public bathroom. public bathroom it says max capacity is 39 if you had 39 people there i would feel very scared. i would be worried there's four <laughs> tables there's a countertop that you yep. can stand at um so the venue itself i'm giving it about a one yeah one um, price you need price was price. great yeah it was like 12 bucks yeah we'll take those and yeah so we we both got our two dark meats we are good to go for the day well for the day we're good to go to start the day. <laughs> yes, we got four more places to go today. That's right. Our last stop today before we leave the downtown Dallas area 
is checking out the giant eyeball. It is, I believe, made of fiberglass and it's on private property, so you can't get any closer to this. But this is all within an easy walking distance, and you can get a cool little photo. All right, one of the few remaining drive ins left in Dallas. We're here at Keller's Drive In. Uh, they do not have dine in, so we're going to be eating in the parking lot. There's your menu. All right, well, hopefully they give us lots of napkins because Rachel's going with the cheeseburger and I'm going with the number eight double meat with chili cheese and onions. And tater tots. Tater tots, and we're hoping to get a milkshake. That's what was listed in Eater Dallas. All right, so it said it in the article that there was milkshakes here, but not at this location, which was the one listed in the article. That's so true. Coke Zero it is. All right, $21 is what our total comes to. We got two burgers, two tots, two drinks. And we're going to be standing and using this as a table. It's loud. Yeah, and we got a lot of cars going by. All right, so I just went with plain cheeseburger. Looks like onions, tomato. I think she said mustard. Oh, there is a pickle on there. Yep. Yep, and mustard. And, and you can see the poppy seed bun. That is what they're known for That's here. That's true. Ugh. I'm going to make a mess. <laughs> you won't. The, the table will be fine. Mmm, the hobby's bun is so good. Nice. A little bit more bun to meat ratio than I wanted, but otherwise it's really good. It is that a big is bun. It's a good first bite. And mine's the double burger. They are thin patties. Mm -hmm. um, you can see there's a lot of cheese, chili on that. I'm ready. All right, this might be the best burger I've ever eaten in a parking lot. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Um, the bun is awesome. It's definitely a standout. It does The stand burger up. is, they're thin, but they're... They've got a good char to them. And it's got a huge chunk of onion on it. Like I a whole to, slice through yeah, an onion. That I thought was too much, but it's not. It actually it's really works. Good. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is good. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> All right, so we just wrapped up. That was a good experience, actually. That was a good experience. Um, <laughs> Super <laughs> good service. It was amazing. Yeah, if we had a car, it definitely would have boosted it a little bit, but I would say the food was a four at and least, a half. Yeah, four and um, a okay. good four, strong, solid four. Yeah, I, I did like mine. I thought having the double patty actually helped with the large bun. I agree. Um, and I also like the chili quite a bit. The tots were pretty pretty simple, basic. But freshly fried, so they were yep. delicious. Yeah, Yeah. good experience. Um, if you had a car, it would definitely help. So I want to say overall for Keller's Drive-In, for what you're getting, you're getting an original drive-in. I would give that place a four or five overall. Yeah. The service was excellent. The burgers were great. The with price the was bun, good. The price was good. And the atmosphere is truly an original drive-in. It you is. You can't beat it. And I'm saying four or five because we didn't have a car. Yeah. So to stand in a cement parking lot <laughs> or asphalt parking lot, yeah. meh, that's It's on tough. Us. We, we were using yeah. a cinder block wall as a table. <laughs> yes. But, you know, the things we the things we go through. That's right. <laughs> All right. It is noon. That's right. So you know what it's time for? Margaritas. Yes, and Mariano's Hacienda Ranch is rumored to be where the frozen margarita originated. Story goes, the owner at the time uh, was inspired by the Slurpee at a 7-Eleven and did it for a margarita. I yeah. mean, and who's to blame them? Yeah, it's Give it a try. great invention. That's Let's great. go have it. All right, so we opted with the uh, table side guacamole. And you can see there's my margarita, which is uh, jalapeno and cucumber. And Rachel got the original. I did. It looks good. You want to give it a try? Sure. We don't do frozen margaritas very often. No. I mean, it's a frozen margarita slushy, so it's delicious. <laughs> good. Is it icy? No, it's very smooth. Very, very smooth. It's got a nice tart original flavor. They did have uh, two other flavors, strawberry, strawberry. and mango. But I wanted the original. Tastes like a good original margarita, not icy at all. All right. All right, these margaritas are very tasty. We're going to stick around for another one. And the coolest thing that I noticed, you can order it by the gallon. <laughs> we might need to get Just one. To take it home and put yeah. it in your freezer. <laughs> All right, next round of margaritas. I went with the frozen strawberry. Looks really good. 
And then we went to the Wanda. Classic margarita with control. Control? control? Yeah. It was interesting because one of them had Grand Marnier and one of them had Contro, which both of them are orange. Of course. So, That's a really good margarita. But the uh, Grand Marnier one was $1 more, so we went with the cheaper one. That's right. Let us know if you think we made the right decision or not. It's pretty tasty. All right, that was definitely the highest price spot. It was, but Mariano's, yeah. you're supposed to come here for the frozen margaritas, and let me tell you, five of five. Yeah, the frozen margaritas were the best. Um, it's By probably far. the best frozen margarita I've ever had. Yeah, so And that's why we smooth. had to have more. Yeah, so very smooth. Like, there was no ice chunks. It was like, it truly was like a slushy. Yes. It reminded me of an icy or slushy. Mm -hmm. It was delicious. Yeah, you should definitely check that out. Yeah. Um, the other margaritas, I would say a four out of five, they were good. Um, but the frozen one, psh, awesome. Blew us away. And oh. the atmosphere is very cool yeah. too. I was gonna say overall, I would give the place a four or five. We had a good waiter. We had cool atmosphere. They do have a patio seating, which is air conditioned. I did tell Josh a couple times, if that patio seating wasn't air conditioned, you would sell twice as many of the frozen margaritas because yes. they're that smooth. Yeah, we would have definitely had more of them, mm -hmm. but we got more to go. That's right. <laughs> All right, according to this sign, May 11, 1971 is when the world's first frozen margarita was made. All, All right. right. <laughs> I was gonna say, nothing says Berea tacos like Chris and John. Yeah, <laughs> Vietnamese street food. Um, and those margaritas hit a little harder than I expected, so I'm ready for some tacos. That's right, we're ready to eat. All right, we are getting the Berea Bao Buns. And it has Angry Pho as a dipping sauce. We both got Tai Chi. And then the Berea Tacos. Which is some of our favorites. Some of our favorites for sure. And then you can see we've got the Pho, or Angry Pho dipping sauce as well. Check those out. And this place is busy, by the way. It's packed. All right, this is the spot that we kind of were unsure about because it's not like a long standing place, but it does seem like it's very much a uh, modern push right now. It's huge on Instagram, huge on TikTok. It has a huge social media following. The food was great, but right now all I'm thinking about is. I'm so full. Yes, we are hitting a wall right now. It is 223. Nope. It is 230 right now. Yeah. Um, we have one more spot we want to get to today. But if you're going to do this, um, yeah, the wall is entering. But let's think back to this. I was going to say, let's give a star rating. Because I will tell you, the Berea Bow. Five of five. I mean, if you can yeah. get ten of five stars, I would ten too. Of five. Yeah, the Berea Bow easily so is good. the best bite that we've had so far in Dallas. Yeah, um, it's one of the best bites of Ever. the month, year, <laughs> whatever. It was. It delicious. was great. Um, the pho sauce or juice or soup, nice, warm, it's got really spice good. To it. Nice yeah, kick. it went well with uh, the the tacos. The Berea tacos I thought were good. They were a little dry. Yeah. But I mean, the bow. We've, we've had some really Get good the burritos before. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, overall, though, very cool vibe. The Thai tea was very good. The price wasn't too bad. No. Um, overall star rating. Overall, uh, 4.9. I was going to say 4.75. Yes. <laughs> Easy. It was very good. Great overall experience right there. Right. All right. We have made our way to Grapevine for our final stop of the day. Tolbert's. Tolbert's? Is that how you pronounce yes. it? Yes. Okay. Southwest Chile. It's like been around since the 50s? 60s. Okay, 60s. Yes. Yeah. It's been a long time. So if you're looking for some Southwest chili, Texas style, this is supposed to be the place to go, so we're going to try it. I'm struggling with this today because I think it's about 95 degrees here in Texas. Yeah. And I find chili to be a fall dish, <laughs> so we'll see how it works. It's the one we're struggling with the most, yeah. but hopefully it will turn us around. That's right. All right, we decided because we're just doing soup and probably beer 
We're sitting at the bar, and I gotta say they have a really nice looking draft menu. They do. So if you're looking for some good beers, looks like they got them here at Tolbert's. Yeah. All right, on the left we've got a Miracle Wheat Blood Orange, that's for Rachel, and then I went with a Watermelon Blonde, both from our Texas breweries. <laughs> were you confused what you were gonna say? <laughs> I was gonna cut that out, I guess I won't now. <laughs> Um, and then we asked for a bowl of chili. We're going to share that. Asked if it comes with beans, and she said it can. And we said, can it not? And she <laughs> said yes. All right, this is a big old bowl of chili. It's a big old bowl of chili. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and stir some up so you can see what it looks like. It's red. It sure is. Um, it does come with onions and cheese. And who wouldn't want cheese on there? Right. Like, that seems like a delicious idea. Well, I guess it's time for some chili. The sign does say under the specials that it's never too hot for a bowl of chili. So my, my so, statement earlier may not hold true. There we go, chili time. Um, I will admit, I have probably not had a bowl of chili for 30 years. Uh, I've had it since then, but yeah. I, we don't eat chili often. We definitely no. don't eat chili at our house. I'm not a big fan of beans, so that's why I was asking about that. Luckily, yeah. we were able to get it without. Um, when I was stirring it, I was nervous because the beef chunks actually looked like they were, but it's really good. It's, it's very delicious. peppery. It is. It's got a kick to it. Yes. It would go great on a burger over fries with a hot dog. <laughs> yeah, this would be the best chili dog. Mm -hmm. um, Honestly, even put it on like an omelet or something. Ooh, yeah. That would be good. This stuff's good. Uh, we're just kind of towards the end of the day, so it's a little tough. Yeah. But I like it. I like the setting. What would the you give? Beer this? list is good. Yeah. What would you give the chili itself? What you're coming for out of five stars? I mean, the chili itself, I'd probably give it like a four and a half stars. I agree. I don't know that. I don't know what would make it better, except maybe like a side of cornbread, or I guess some people do cinnamon rolls. Yeah, maybe a side maybe of something side just to something? dunk in it. But otherwise, uh, yeah, I'm with you. Four and a half easy. Yeah, but it's a good spot. They got a great beer list. We might stick here for a little bit. We'll, yeah. um, and then we've got five more places to go tomorrow. I'm not sure if we're bringing you with tonight, but... We'll see. Yeah, let's see what we do. Oh, overall, we did too. We like the atmosphere. Service has been great. I would give it, an, again, solid four and a half. Yep, me too. Yeah, easy. Four and a half. Come out here. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to day two of this epic challenge. Uh, we are today in downtown Dallas. We are at Clyde Warren Park, which is actually a park that is built over a freeway. Yeah, it's very beautiful. It's kind of interesting because it just shows up in the middle. We are yeah. walking downtown, and there's huge sky huge skyscrapers everywhere, and then this really beautiful park with a ton of food trucks around yeah. it. And there is a lot of activity going on. You can hear yoga in the background, but we are here for one thing, and it is for a food truck who is always here. It's Fletcher's Corny Dogs. They've been here since 1942. Yeah, and apparently they started the corn dogs over at the Texas State Fair. Really? So, we're going to try a couple of those to start our day. I guess it says Corny Dogs, not just Corn Dogs. Yep. Those are wild. Seems the same to me, though. <laughs> yeah. All right, we end up getting a jalapeno and cheese one, a lemonade. <laughs> and the original. And the original, this was about 22.73. Yeah, and it was fresh. I mean, yes. it took a minute, but it's ready. Yeah. All right, I'm afraid it's gonna be so hot. <laughs> it is like super fresh. They just opened mm. up. They opened up at 11, which online I thought they were opening at 10, so I messed up with that. It's very crisp, very hot. I love the amount of corn batter behind it that's not too much but it's enough to know it's a corn dog so nice i think it's very good i like it <laughs> yeah we're big corn dog friends so. <laughs> i was gonna say i i like a good corn dog <laughs> all right so i have the jalapeno and cheddar in the first bite i don't notice anything too much yet i can see jalapeno in there for sure mm. i do really like the the batter though yeah it's not too thick right yeah I, yep, I see the little bit of jalapeno there. Yeah. Yeah, it, it looks like it's a pretty thick batter, but it actually eats very light. Mm -hmm. Kind of shocking. That's a good corn dog. Yeah, yours actually looks a little thicker around one of the edges than yeah, mine right, does. Right yeah, right around here I could see there was a little bit, but I could eat this all day. <laughs> it's good. All right, we just finished up. 
uh, I ended up liking the jalapeno cheese one better. And I like the original one better. It's It was a texture thing on the hot dog pieces itself, yeah. I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. the original has a bit more bite on the hot dog, yeah. whereas the jalapeno cheddar one, it just ate a little softer. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't notice any big globs of cheese, which I would have been fine with, though. But I did notice the jalapeno in that yeah. one. Yeah, mm -hmm. but as far as the food goes, for a corn dog, I give it a five out of five. I agree, and you're, I mean, like, that's what you're here for. So yep. you're here for a corn dog from a food truck. From a food truck service and the atmosphere, I'd actually yeah. give it a five out of five overall, I would, too. I would, too. Come <laughs> back, mm -hmm. definitely recommend. That's right. All right, for our next stop, we are actually just waiting in the lobby over here at the Ritz-Carlton. Yeah, it seems way yeah, fancy. <laughs> way fancy compared to where we were just at, which was a food truck. Mm -hmm. uh, we are at Fearings, which Dean Fearing, the head chef, has been called the father of Southwestern cuisine. So we are going to try tortilla soup, which is another staple you must get if you're in Dallas. Yes, so let's try it. All right, we're starting off with a couple of local beers. Rachel has a Dallas Blonde. Yes. And I have a Shinerbach. All right, so we got some complimentary bread. We have a cornbread. I think it was a bacon cheddar cornbread, a sourdough, and then a Shinerbach cheddar as well. And then with the... The butter, there was a cloche over it, so it was like smoked butter. Yes, yeah, smoked butter. I think we'll give that a try. Yes, <laughs> this is a fancy one. Smoked chicken, avocado, lime, tortilla. Yum. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Thank you. Alright, so the lady said before she poured in it was smoked chicken, avocado, and lime. Because we feel bad uh, sitting down at a table like this and just sharing an order of soup, which these are shared portions. Um, yeah. We did get a Wagyu beef empanada, which has a chipotle crema and a roasted tomato sauce. Roasted tomato sauce. Looks really good. All right, we just stepped outside and that was awesome. It was delicious. Yeah, so much depth of flavor. Mm -hmm. um, mm. The soup is definitely great. The experience was great. Five out of five for me. I agree, five out of five, especially for the soup and overall experience. And I will tell you, even if you weren't coming for the soup, I really, really bet the fearings would give you a five out of five in general. Yeah, the bread was some of the best free bread I've ever had. Yeah. Uh, the service was great. Go it was, there. It was great. Hey, we're the same height. Yes, that's All right. weird. <laughs> Apparently, if you are wanting enchiladas here in Dallas, the place to go is El Phoenix. That's right, they say so. enchiladas, whether it be beef, chicken, or cheese, and we're hoping to, wrong. We're hoping to try all of them. That's right, and a frozen margarita. Yes, I hope it's as good as one yesterday. I do too. All right, so we are starting off with two frozen margaritas. I have the strawberry. Watermelon. Watermelon over here. We are hoping that they're as good. You want to try it out? Yeah, I don't see any salt on the rim this time. Yeah, no salt on the rim. We are big fans of salt. Mm -hmm. All right. Surprisingly good watermelon taste. And it's very smooth, not icy. I was really worried about it, but they know how to blend them down here. Yeah, the texture we definitely think is the best part of what we had with the frozen margaritas yesterday. Glad we have it again today. Yeah. All right, our food is here, and we actually ended up with the El Jefe, which had the three different enchiladas we wanted, a hard shell taco, rice, beans, and a, I believe it was beef tamale. I think so too. Yeah, so this looks like the cheese enchilada, a beef tamale, chicken with sour cream sauce enchilada, and then beef with a beef, or a chili con carne um, <laughs> enchilada. <laughs> These look good. All right, we just got done here at El Phoenix, and we had a revelation <laughs> yes. about Mexican food versus Tex-Mex. Yes, so Tex-Mex is made more with like the chili powders and whatnot, and Mexican food is made more with chilies. So that's a big difference, and Tex-Mex has a lot more cheese than regular Mexican food. Yes, so like when we were eating- At least eating, that's what we've learned. Yeah, when we were eating it, we were kind of comparing it a lot more to enchiladas, which we've had at Mexican restaurants. Um, so we took that into account, but as overall for food, for the enchiladas and why you come here, or according to the article we found why you come here, 
I would give it a three and a half. They were good, but I've had stellar enchiladas yeah. elsewhere. <laughs> um, we really liked, and we both ranked these, uh, we liked the chicken, then the beef, yep. and a bit lower was the cheese. The cheese was, um, the queso almost was like a cheese whiz, and it, it really wasn't something that we wanted on our cheese one. Uh, usually we've had it with red sauce. Yeah, like a red enchilada sauce is how I prefer my cheese enchiladas. So yes. And that's just a personal preference. You may absolutely love the cheese ones. So. Now, as far as an overall experience and price, the price was great, the margaritas were great, service was good, um, and fast. I would say they were so speedy. We've only so, been in there maybe 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> overall experience was definitely a four. Agreed. Um, so I would definitely take that into account, but if you're looking for that kind of stuff, it's a good place to hit up. Yeah, try it out. All right, a bit of a long walk, but we made it to our next spot, E-Bar Tex-Mex. All right, I was just saying to Rachel that I think this is the best salsa we've had so far this trip. It's got body, it's got heat. Heat? Heat. <laughs> it is warm. And it's got a little bit of staying power. Ready? All right, so we got the E-Bar case, so. Sour cream. Sour cream, beef, and avocado. Oh, I think I saw a jalapeno in there too, Josh. I hope so. I could go for some heat. Good sized portion. This is the bowl, yeah. which is like $2 more than the cup. So why not get the bowl, right? All right. We're starting to hit that wall that we did yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily today we have a little bit more time. That's true. So we uh, don't have to go to another place and eat right away. No, and we're walking, so we're getting a little bit of exercise, yes. burn some of those calories off we've been eating. That's true. Yeah, yesterday we were doing a lot of Uber and Lyft. Today we've walked pretty much all of it. Yeah. Um, but as far as the queso goes, I thought it was really good. Um, initially we thought it was uh, not hot enough or not spicy, spicy enough, yeah. which we like spice and we're kind of starting to learn a little bit about Tex-Mex like it's not as spicy it no. doesn't seem at least and so with that we actually told our uh, waiter that we actually we could use a little bit more spice we were already kind of thinking that the queso was probably a four out of five yeah easily a four out of five it was good good creamy um, held up well to the chips yeah it didn't like uh, seize up for most like some yeah no not at, so at all didn't seize up at all so um we did tell him we wanted more spice and he's like how do i give you do you want serranos or do you want pickled jalapenos and we both looked at him like really yeah so um, he brought us out a little dish of serranos and honestly boom changed it perfect mm -hmm. it was exactly what we wanted i would say it was a five out of five at that point yeah um the environment is cool it's a sports bar yeah Great service. Yeah. Absolutely great service. So if, I would easily give them four and a half out of five overall. There we go. Yeah. I'm on board with that. We got one place left to do and we're probably going to eat a lot there. So we got to get back and Rest. relax, <laughs> take a nap, hopefully. That's right. We started our video with barbecue and we're gonna end it with some Texas barbecue. Yeah, we are. One of the best places we've heard of so far in Dallas. Is a pecan lodge. <laughs> I was like, I can't think of the name real yes, quick. Yes, we actually have asked all the Uber and Lyft drivers too. Yeah. So this is a place to go to, we are in the Deep Ellum area. Very cool area. It is very cool. Just hit up a brewery. So now we're gonna go get some barbecue. All right, highest tally, I think, 69.28 right here. Uh, we did half a pound of fatty brisket, half a pound of pulled pork, half a pound of pork ribs, fried okra, banana pudding, and two sodas. Which I assume by looking at it is a 
approximately one and a half ribs. Yeah, it looks like one and a half, and they look long, so like not baby back. Yeah. And we end up with about six pounds of pickles and onions. <laughs> um, you can get your own sauce, but this looks good. Oh Very good. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, look at that thing, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. And it's off. And it's gone. So, I like to test it with my fingers. Look at you this. You should brisket. Oh my gosh. Look at that brisket. That's just like... <laughs> falling apart. I love the smoke ring on it though too. You can see that easy. Mm. So I feel like this definitely is a bit of a higher level, higher level brisket than what we had the other night. I can um, tell by the way it... Yes. Pile the part, yeah. Yeah, and it's got a lot more flavor to it. I'm gonna go ahead and take a bite too of this uh, pulled pork. So we had wanted to get the beef rib and the burnt ends, and they were sold out. And it's only 6:30 yeah. at night, so. Which maybe is a little late for it, but we're gonna try to get one more restaurant in for you guys. Yeah. Um, but great crisp edge on this. I love the char on the brisket. This is really good. You should definitely get here. <laughs> All right, real quick, what my takeaways are, I love the black pepper that you get out of Texas barbecue. You can definitely get that from this, and I was missing it at the first place. Um, all the meats are super tender, delicious. The brisket is amazing. You should definitely get that, get the fatty one. Uh, the pulled pork is really good too, and I love the char that they get on all this stuff. The uh, okra is nice, it's not slimy, it is salty in a good way, and it's a good way to cut your meat. All right, we just left Pecan Lodge. I'm so glad we left it for the end. Me too. They're known for their brisket and you've got to get their brisket. It was so good. The peppery uh, crust on it, the smoke ring, the tenderness. It just like fell apart. You saw the video. But oh your favorite. My favorite was the pulled pork. Yeah, the pulled pork was yeah, great. It was delicious. Yeah, you should definitely try to get that. Mm -hmm. um, all around, it was great. Glad five, we had it. Five of five? Five of five. Rachel said no to a pickle margarita. Who's in with me? I would try it. All right, unfortunately, they were out of burnt ends and beef ribs. So we are coming two and a half blocks down to Terry Black's. Let's see if we can get some. All right, bonus footage. This is loud in here, but you can see we did get a beef rib. Check this thing out. Uh, there's Rachel for reference. <laughs> that is a monster. Yeah, that's a tall boy beer right there. Look at that thing, oh my God. And then we got some burnt ends. So these were all sold out over at Pecan Lodge. So we came down about two and a half blocks. Look at that. All right, this is Terry Black, so you're not gonna go wrong at either place. And they're the two places that everybody talked about, Pecan Lodge and Terry Black's. <laughs> that just slides right off the bone. And this place, if Josh hasn't mentioned, is freaking packed. But that beef rib is hard to beat. Yeah. If you can get a beef rib, do it. Look at this smoke ring on those burnt ends. Right? Oh.
we are back at the airport, but we do want to leave you with a few takeaways that we have from our weekend here in Dallas. Um, first up, not all barbecues are equal. That's true. <laughs> we learned that and we found some good ones. Uh, frozen margaritas are the way to go. Tex-Mex is not Mexican food. And for a fun night, head to Deep Ellum. We had a blast over there. Yep. You don't need to break the bank to eat good in Dallas. But if you are going to, do it on a beef rib. I agree with all those. Well worth it. Yes. If you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. You can also follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and X, formerly Twitter. All our links are down below. Thank you.